Imagine you're on call for the service you work on and you get paged in the middle of the night. Phone blaring, you stumble out of bed, sleepily turn on your computer, and look at your metrics. Looks like request latency went up a lot and users are getting errors. How do you figure out what's going on? In this video, we'll answer this question by looking at the relationship between throughput and latency, subtypes of latency like queuing latency, and techniques for debugging high latency. All you need is a little familiarity with software engineering. Let's go! To start, let's go over how our server works. A server is a thing that receives requests, does some work to computer response, and sends it back. Inside a server, one or more threads divide up the work between them. A thread can be thought of as a single worker that does work. A single-threaded server has one worker handling requests, while a multi-threaded server might have multiple ones handling requests at the same time. Going back to our terms latency and throughput, the request processing latency, usually measured in milliseconds, is the amount of time it takes to generate the response for a request. In other words, it's the time in between when the server receives the request and when it sends the response. Generally, this goes up when the server is doing more work to process the request. Low latency is good because it means less waiting time for the person making the request. For example, when you use the internet, websites with low latency load more snappily than websites with high latency. On the other hand, throughput is the rate at which the server handles requests. It's a measure of how much work it's able to get through at a particular moment and is measured in requests per second, also known as queries per second, sometimes abbreviated QPS or RPS. A quiet server might be handling one request a minute or even less, while a busy server could be handling thousands of requests per second. To use an analogy, imagine an ice cream stand. Customers stand in line, pay for ice cream, get their ice cream, and then leave. The latency is the time when a customer enters the line to when they get their ice cream. Lower is better, as you might guess. It's great to get your ice cream in under five minutes and not so great to wait an hour for it. Throughput, on the other hand, is the rate at which customers are being served. For example, when no customers are arriving at all, the throughput is zero. If one customer is being served per minute, the throughput is one customer per minute. A useful sibling of throughput is maximum throughput, which is the maximum rate requests can be served if the server is working at full speed. In the ice cream stand analogy, it's the maximum rate customers can be served if all employees are busy. For example, a small ice cream stand with one employee might serve up to one customer per minute, while a bigger one might be able to serve up to four customers a minute. In simple scenarios, you can estimate this as the number of request handlers divided by the request processing latency. For example, if you have four threads handling requests, but each request takes 100 milliseconds, then a simple estimate of your max throughput is four threads divided by 100 milliseconds equals 40 requests per second. Or for an ice cream shop, if you have two employees serving customers that take one minute per customer, that's two customers per minute. This is useful because if there is no line at the ice cream stand, and fewer than two customers show up per minute, no line will form because everyone is being served on time. But if there's a big rush of customers, then a line will form and get longer and longer. It's like a popular restaurant which likely has a super long line to get seated during meal hours because the customer entry rate exceeds the max throughput of the restaurant. The same is true for servers. When requests are made at a rate below maximum throughput, the server can handle it without problems but if the rate exceeds the maximum throughput, then the server will start to fall behind. When the server falls behind, it takes longer for requests to be fulfilled because they have to spend time waiting for the server to get through the request in front of it. This extra waiting is called queuing latency. When a server has no queue, like an ice cream stand with no line, the queuing latency is zero. As the queue builds up, queuing latency increases. So, the total latency experienced by a request is queuing latency, which is the time spent waiting in line, plus request processing latency, the time to actually handle the request. Request processing latency is also known as intrinsic latency because it arises from the request itself and not just from waiting in line. For example, if you've ever waited a really long time in a line just to do something that takes just a second, like waiting in a long line to scan a ticket to get into a concert, you experienced a scenario of high queuing latency and low intrinsic latency. Let's look at the relationship between all of these concepts with this server simulation. This server is receiving three requests per second, has one thread or request processor to handle requests, and each request takes 250 milliseconds. Let's kick it off. Okay, we see the expected throughput, which is three requests per second. The max throughput is one thread divided by 250 milliseconds equals four requests per second, 
so we are currently under the max throughput, so we shouldn't expect any cubing latency. As expected, the total latency stays flat at 250 milliseconds. Now, let's crank up the incoming request rate to 5 requests per second. What do you think will happen? First, throughput increases from 3 to 4, but not to 5 because 4 is the maximum throughput as we just computed. Secondly, because 5 requests are coming in per second, but the server can only handle 4 of them, latency starts to increase because the server is falling behind and queuing latency increases. You can see how quickly latency spikes because the server is just falling behind more and more and more. To fix this, let's increase the number of threads from 1 to 2. Now, the max throughput is 2 threads divided by 250 milliseconds equals 8 requests per second, and you can see the throughput double as expected. 8 is greater than 5, so now the server is clearing its backlog, and latency eventually comes back down to 250 milliseconds, the intrinsic latency. Now, what if we increase the number of threads from 2 to 3? What do you think will happen? Well, nothing. Max throughput is now 12 requests per second, but because the request rate is just 5, nothing changes. Importantly, latency also doesn't change because it still takes each request 250 milliseconds to be processed. This is an important rule. Increasing request processing capacity does not affect intrinsic latency. This is sometimes referenced with the adage, nine pregnant women cannot produce a baby in one month. For the next step, let's pretend there's a hiccup in our request processing, so intrinsic latency goes up to 650 milliseconds. The max throughput is now 3 threads divided by 650 milliseconds equals 4.6 requests per second, below the incoming rate again, so a queue will start to form, and queuing latency starts to grow, which causes overall latency to grow. Now, let's say we optimize some things so that each request now only takes 150 milliseconds to process, down from 250 milliseconds originally. Now, throughput is 3 threads divided by 150 milliseconds equals 20 requests per second. As a result, the queue empties, but also total latency comes down to 150 milliseconds because we optimized intrinsic latency. To summarize, there are broadly speaking two ways you can improve the performance of a system. One is to increase processing capacity, and one is to reduce intrinsic latency. If a system is falling behind, increasing processing capacity increases max throughput and reduces queuing latency. If a system is not falling behind, meaning it has no queue, increasing processing capacity increases max throughput, but does not affect latency. As for reducing intrinsic latency, if a system is falling behind, it increases max throughput and reduces queuing latency, just like increasing processing capacity. But if a system is not falling behind, reducing intrinsic latency does reduce total latency, unlike increasing processing capacity. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the video where we got paged in the middle of the night. What should we do to fix the increasing latency we saw? Well, it helps to figure out if the latency is queuing latency or intrinsic latency. To do this, we need to look at throughput as well as latency. If throughput has held constant for some time, then the increased latency might be from queuing latency, perhaps from a spike in incoming traffic, and so we should increase capacity by increasing the number of threads. If throughput has decreased, then maybe intrinsic latency has increased, causing max throughput to decrease, and we should dig deeper into why. To end this video, I want to mention that we just discussed a simple scenario with one service receiving requests. Real systems are much more complicated because you have many services talking to each other. For example, perhaps your service talks to a database for each request, which means that your database could also become a bottleneck. In this scenario, increasing the number of threads may not increase maximum throughput. It's like adding another employee to your ice cream stand, but you only have one ice cream mixer or one credit card reader won't do any good because the bottleneck is elsewhere. To fully understand a system's performance, you need to consider throughput and latency across all components of the system, as well as how the components interact. Hope that was helpful. If you liked this video, please consider sharing it with someone who'd enjoy it too. Thanks.